Okay, today we are finally ready to make bread. This is the bread recipe. So, things you will need, I tried to set some stuff up ahead of time so that we could move quickly. We've got five cups of flour in the bowl. Um, All-purpose flour. I'm using unbleached flour, that's why it's kind of tan. Um, just, just a little bit tan-ish in color, kind of off-white, okay? So, five cups flour, one tablespoon of salt. So, take my tablespoon here. There's our tablespoon of salt. And um, a tablespoon seems like a lot, but it's the only seasoning we're adding, so that's why we need it. And then we need a cup of nice, bubbly, active starter. So you can see this is nice, bubbly, um, fluffy starter. So we're doing one cup of this, like our uh, recipe, like our video for our starter maintenance said, it's either one cup of nice, fluffy, active starter, or if you're taking it straight out of the fridge and it's lazy and cold starter that doesn't have any airy bubbliness to it, you'd use three quarters of a cup of that uh, lazy fridge starter or one cup of nice, bubbly starter. So here's our one cup, nice bubbly starter. Shake that out the best you can, and then I'm just gonna run my finger around here. Uh, this will be a dirty hands activity, so don't don't worry too much about uh, keeping your hands clean. All right, so there's that. Then we've got one and three quarters cups of water. Dumping it in. All right, and then just to kind of keep things neat, I'm gonna run grab a, a spatula or a wooden spoon or whatever you got, just to just to get the the wet um, the water and the sourdough starter just mixed into the flour, get it to pull together into a dough, and then we'll mix it a little further. All right, we just gotta get all this wateriness and all this dryness together to make a dough. It is a little bit of a sticky, shaggy dough, even in the end, so it's not like it's gonna be a nice, um, kind of easy to form dry dough. And, um, Oh, here we go. We're, we're starting to shape up just a little bit here. Not super great. You can see just under the surface, it's just really, really sticky. Um, this is this is the secret to a lot of these old, old recipes that have like only a handful of ingredients. They're not like these modern recipes that have 10 different ingredients and, you know, a bunch of special stuff that you, ha you can only get online and all that. It's very simple. Um, the, the key to a lot of these old recipes is human suffering. So this dough is very difficult to work with. Um, well, not very difficult. It's a pain. And the pain is what makes it taste good, I swear. So here I have a dough scraper that I'm going to use just for speed sake. You can just do this with your hands and then you just kind of sit here at the end and you just kind of crumble it off your hands um, at the end. So it's going to stick to you, just, just how it is. It's going to stick to me even though I'm using this. Uh-oh. Lost a piece into the salt. Let me shut the salt container. It's a little bit of a, a deal. So I'm just going around, I'm just kind of scraping the sides, smushing, scrape, smush, scrape, smush. And what we see, if you can see down in here, you can see we've got all this dry stuff down here. We need to get that dry stuff combined into the dough blob. Okay, so we're just going to keep kind of chopping this up and trying to get this dough to absorb that flour because there are parts of this dough that are practically still just water. There's little water pockets and there's dry pockets and we're trying to kind of evenly distribute things. So I'm just going in with my knuckles. Um, pro tip that I'm not following here is before you start hand kneading a dough like this, my hands are already dirty so I'm just going to have to deal with it. But if you take a little bit of cooking oil and just kind of like act like you're putting on lotion with that cooking oil and just get it evenly coated into your hands, um, 
it won't stick to you as bad, but you don't want your hands dripping wet with oil. We don't want to add oil to the dough. We just want to make sure your hands are moisturized enough that the dough doesn't like soak into your skin and be extra sticky. Okay, so we're just gonna continue to kind of smush and when you find maybe like this side of the dough, where am I feeling? Right here, right here is a really wet spot. I'm just gonna put that side down and kind of smush and that dry stuff is going to absorb onto that wet spot. We're just gonna keep doing that until we get that dry stuff in the bottom to absorb. Okay, so now we got a really wet spot. There we go. Okay, we're starting to get there. Now, you just are gonna take your spatula or whatever you got, just start scraping down the sides with your wooden spoon or something, and just make sure you don't have any dry clumps left. Okay, we got some stuff sticking to the bottom. We kinda wanna get that up. All right, and it's starting to behave the best it's going to anyway. We're just gonna give it a couple turns over. So I'm just kind of like squishing it down and then kind of folding it in half over itself and then squishing it back down and kind of folding it in half over itself. All right, there we go. There we go. And see, you're just, you're just gonna have to deal with it and just kind of crumble it off. Um, try to crumble as much of it back into the bowl and kind of combine it back with a dough ball. Be real careful about crumbling this into the sink, um, especially if you've got a lot of it stuck to your hands. If you crumble a lot of this down your sink, it will clog your pipes and it will set up like concrete. Um, also, for your tools that have got this on there, you need to get it off while it is soft. If you let it completely dry, it is like plaster. You do not want it to dry. So. There we go, now we've got it in the bowl, that's fine, we can leave it there, but we need to cover this bowl. So if you don't have a bowl that has a matching lid, then you're gonna need to cover it pretty good with plastic wrap or something. Um, also, you probably do want to add just a pinch of water to get the humidity in the bowl up to start with. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab my spray bottle of water that I keep in my kitchen, give it one shot, there we go. And then if you do have a bowl with a matching lid, here I have just a little corner. I tore off a piece of paper towel. I just fold it into a little point. So kind of into a little point. So it's like four layers thick. Then I take it and I place that point pointing inside on the edge of the bowl. And what this is gonna do is it's going to create a little air gap between the inside of the bowl, or sorry, not, it, the, between the lip of the bowl, this lip of the bowl, and the lid. It's gonna cause it to leak a little bit of air. You need it to leak a little bit of air because most of these lids are so airtight that if you don't put something in there, what will happen is in a couple of hours, or um, it's, it's going to blow the lid off and you could end up with sourdough bread on your ceiling or something. We don't want that. So we're gonna let it leak and this way it can breathe, but we can keep the lid on it to keep the humidity in. If we don't keep the humidity in, there will be a skin that forms and we'll lose too much water from the dough and the dough will be all dry and nasty. We don't want dry, nasty dough. We want nice, humid dough. So now, we got it covered. It's able to breathe a little bit. If you use plastic wrap, plastic, unless you're like a magnificent plastic wrapper, you are going to usually have at least a little bit of a leak so that you're okay on that. Um, or if you've got it completely perfectly covered, just poke a teeny tiny hole in your plastic wrap, whatever works, okay? Le make sure it leaks just a little bit of air. Now, um, you're going to want to either do this in the evening and then let this sit in your house on the counter overnight. Or it's hotter than heck today. It is currently 87 degrees outside and I have a garage. So I'm gonna just go ahead and take this out to the garage. Um, and instead of maybe like hmm, eight to 12 hours overnight, this will probably be able to raise in two to three hours just because of that heat. Now, 
Caution, you do not want the dough to get over 100 degrees because then it's dangerous and it can kill the bacteria and the yeast that you want. You need it to stay like 80s and 90s-ish is like perfect. Um, room temperature is also okay. It just takes a little longer. So overnight at room temperature or out in, in the hot heat. However, just like our starter, no putting it in direct sunlight. Direct sunlight, bad. Okay, so it needs to be hot and shady. All right, so I will catch back up with you after we're risen. And this is the first rise. There'll be two rises. This is our first rise. We'll come back um, and we'll work with it again. Then we'll have another rise and then we'll get to bacon. All right, we are done waiting on our first raise. I let this raise um, out in a hot garage for approximately, I think about three hours. So let's see how it went. We can take our little paper point and set it off to the side. You can see I opened it up and I looked at it before, but um, we're, we're nice. We're a lot more moisturized than we were. And then what we get to do now is I am going to, just a second, grab a pinch of oil and do what I told you guys to do. Just, just a little, little tiny drizzle of oil in my hands and just rub it all over, just so my hands are less likely to stick. And I mean, I used probably, I don't know, quarter of a teaspoon, maybe half a teaspoon, and that'll be plenty. I'm trying to moisturize my hand, not the dough. Okay. So then what we need to do is we need to knock the air out of the dough. And what we're going to do is we're going to use our fingertips and jab into it really quick. Why we're doing it quick is it's a wet dough and it'll stick to your fingernails. Um, don't forget to grease your fingernails too. All right, so we're just going to jab in quick here and kind of degas it. And you're also going to want to kind of scrape under the dough. And what we're going to do is we need to fold the dough just a little bit. So we're going to fold it up like this and then squish it okay so we folded it in half from this way then we're going to fold it in half this way and then we'll fold it in half that way and then we'll fold it in half up so we're going to fold it from the four corners okay even though we're, t we're talking about a bowl but you know what i mean okay so we're going to scrape 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 this half of the dough up and stick it down then rotate the bowl then scrape 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 stretch and squish you can see it's sticking to me. That's okay. Scrape, 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 scrape. And then stretch all of this over it. And then get it pushed back down. All right. Perfect. It is perfect. And why you do those folds is those folds are going to be what really helps your bread when it hits the oven. It's going to help it rise and lift because without that, um, typically you, you would be baking bread in a bread pan and the bread pan sides help the bread lift. We are not baking in a bread pan. We're breaking, we're baking on a flat sheet. So you got to have something to get the bread to rise up instead of just pooling out and having like a, a loaf that's two inches tall and 10 inches wide. So those folds are important for that. So don't, don't forget to fold. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to take our dough, scoot it off to the side, just grab a little bit of flour. We're just going to flour our countertop real quick. Because what we need to do is we need to get this dough shaped up, okay? And just get enough flour on the countertop that you know that your bread isn't going to stick. It doesn't have to be completely drenched in flour or anything. We don't need to be super wasteful. So then we're going to take our dough and we're just going to use our same little kind of scrape under and pull away hand technique to get it out. This is another place where your dough scraper comes in handy as well. Come on, dough. All right. Got a couple little more nuggets in the bowl that I want to get out of here. Had to work hard for that dough. We don't want to be leaving too much of it behind. All right. So now it's out on our countertop. 
Now we just kind of take and turn it over a couple times, just kind of squish it out a little bit, get just a light dusting of flour on it. And then what we're actually gonna do is we're just gonna take all of this excess flour and just scrape it off to the side, okay? Then we're gonna do another set of folds now that our dough is lightly floured. So fold, squish, fold, squish, then fold, squish, then one last fold this way, and squish. And then what you're gonna do is this seam side, we're actually gonna roll the whole ball into this. So how you do that is you take on your unfloured countertop and kind of roll it like this. And what it does is it pulls this, the edges to be tight. That's what you want, you want tight edges. Okay, and then we're just gonna kind of tuck up under, we're just kind of tucking this excess dough into the belly button. And then if you feel like it's getting a little saggy, do a couple of these and what I'm doing is I'm angling my hands in and I'm just kind of pushing as I go, I'm pushing it under. And so what we're doing is we're stretching an outer skin around it and see, instead of being a blob that's stretched out all the way to here, now we've created tension in the dough and now the dough wants to stand up instead of just stretching out. So we're just go like that. All right, and then let's take some of this dough, some of this flour, let's get it on here, and then take and roll your dough so belly button is up. And then let's get some of this flour and get that belly button dried. Let's get some of this extra flour, get put out and put it there. There we go. Okay, perfect. Now we need to get a cookie sheet with some sort of non-stick thing on it. <sighs> All right, here is our cookie sheet. And here, this is our cookie sheet. Our non-stick thing is this um, silicone baking mat for me. You could use non-stick foil, parchment paper, whatever you have, you wanna have something under it so it doesn't stick, okay? So what I'm gonna do, is I'm sorry, I know I'm not completely on camera. What I'm gonna need to do is I'm gonna need to pick up my dough ball, just dust off any extra flour, just give it a, a slight roll, tuck into the belly button, make sure we're still nice and tight here. And then, come on baby. We want that nice tight skin. That's what we're, we need. Okay, and this one, I'm actually going to kind of stretch it to be a little bit oblong because I want kind of a longer loaf. So here, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna stretch it like this. Just by pinching it, kind of squeezing on the sheet. You can see we've got all these nice fermentation bubbles from that sourdough starter under the skin. They're going to be nice and crispy and crackly once we cook it up. So, and then again, I'm using my hands like this to kind of pinch a seam under it. Okay, there we go. Now, we've got to keep something over top of this so this does not get too dried out. You can't let this get dry or you are going to have insane trouble getting a beautiful crust on this. So what we are going to need to do is we gotta cover that with something. Um, if you wanna do, like this would also make two really nice round loaves. I'm doing one nice long loaf. If you're doing round loaves, maybe you can just take your, your bowl and put it over them. Um, mine, mine's just about as big as the bowl is right now. So I'm gonna need to find something a little bigger. It's gonna rise a little bit, but maybe just a teens taller, but mainly at this stage in the sourdough game, it's gonna tend to spread. So it's gonna get a little bit longer, gonna get a little bit wider. And don't worry, this, this is not really dirty. I just baked some bread right before this. So there's a little bit of gunk on my cookie sheet, but don't worry about it. All right, so I'm gonna probably go ahead and I'm gonna put a little bit of plastic wrap over this.
just to make sure that we stay nice and um, skin free because that skin is going to ruin your browning. It's going to ruin your crust, going to make your, your loaf ugly. Um, we do not want a nasty dry skin forming on top. And that nasty dry skin will come from not keeping your bread covered for the next hour. So here we go, some plastic wrap. I hate plastic wrap. See if I can actually get it cut without it being a disaster. Okay, it was only a minor disaster. All right. So I'm just gonna keep it kind of covered there. There we go. And because the top is a little bit dry, it won't stick. All right, so this will be able to just keep over here for an hour. What I am gonna do right now is I am going to make sure I have a rack set in the middle of my oven, a rack set in the bottom of my oven, and on that bottom oven rack, you need to put some kind of a metal <clears throat> like baking pan, like a cake pan or something like that that doesn't leak. So no no muffin tins or something that's tiny, nothing made of glass for sure, because you're going to be pouring water into it, and it's going to suddenly be at a boil um, when you're doing it. And that, that water is going to be what gives this a beautiful, crunchy artisan crust. So make sure you get your oven set right so middle rack is going to be where this is going to go bottom rack is going to be where that pan of water is um make sure you preheat that pan that empty pan that does not have water in it yet um on the bottom rack and you are going to preheat your oven to three or sorry 450 degrees get it started get it preheating and you are going to wait for about an hour okay because we need that oven nice and hot, not just preheated, we need it like preheated plus an extra like 45 minutes because we need that heat all the way through the whole oven. So 450 for an hour after that hour, we can go ahead and get this in. I'm gonna get to preheating and I'll catch back up with you. All right, GoPro I just wanna stop. show you what the inside of the oven looks like really quick. Um, so let's take a peek. Here is the inside of the oven. You can see bottom rack is in the bottom position. We've got this old school broiler pan that I use to boil water in. Um, and then I've got the middle, the other rack in the middle position. Um, our, our thermometer's at 450, so we're good and preheated. And um, we are going to get that bread in. So we're, we're gonna switch to the other camera. Okay, so we need to get our bread ready to go. We are gonna go ahead, we are preheated, and my oven does have a convection bake option. Don't use it, use regular bake. So if you, if you have an oven that doesn't have a convection bake option, you are just fine. If you do have a convection bake option, don't use it. It's gonna dry out your bread too fast and your bread will not cook up right. So here we are just removing this plastic wrap without ripping the top. Beautiful. Now, we need a sharp knife. Um, some people will actually use a razor blade. I, my best thing is I have these really sharp little paring knives. They work awesome. Um, this is a, a long loaf, so you have a couple different options. The way you slash it will determine how it spreads open. I'm going to do three diagonal slashes, and that's going to allow it to open up and open out just a little bit. You could do a slash this way, but then it's mostly going to open out and you're gonna end with a end up with a really wide loaf. Um, other things you could do, you could do like three slashes across and then it'd mainly open up kind of up and, and towards the ends. If you're doing a round loaf, um, you can do either. Actually with a round loaf, I often just go down the middle and across and make a, an X through the middle and that just turns out awesome. Um, so let's just go ahead and you're gonna, this, this knife is about a half inch deep. This blade is about a half inch and we're gonna sink this knife down into the bread as we slash about a half an inch. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, nice sharp knife. There we go. You might have to go over the places where you're starting because it might not want to get started too well. 
So we're just going to go slash, slash. Going to have to re-slash that beginning. Okay, then one third slash down here. Okay, re-slash that beginning too. Okay, there we go. There's our three slashes, butamus. All right, so now we had our oven preheated to 450 degrees. We are not gonna leave it at 450, but what we need to do now is we have that pan down in the bottom. We need to get the water in. So about two cups of water. And danger head, children. Um, if you spill this water on your oven door, your oven door is 450 degrees and it's glass. It will shatter instantaneously. You will ruin your oven. So be careful. Don't pull it out and pour it in there because it'll splash onto your door. Um, just put on an oven glove or something if you have sensitive hands and you're gonna make sure you pour it while you're kind of put your hand into the oven and it is hotter than heck in there right now. So be careful, do not spill the water on your oven door, do not. Be very careful. So I'm, I'm gonna dump in, okay? And it's gonna sizzle. Oh, listen to her sizzle. And then you will have a, the biggest blast of steam. And that is what is going to give this a beautiful crust. So right in. All right, shut the door. Do not open the door until you see a dark golden crust. Also, we had it preheated to 450. We need to turn that baby down. We wanted it to 450 because putting that steam in there, opening the door, putting that cold bread in there took some of the heat away from the oven. And we want it, basically, we want that um, little bit of loss of heat to get it to 425. So we're gonna turn down to 425 and it's going to stay at 425 for 35 minutes. And then you're gonna start checking it for doneness every five minutes thereafter. So. Tell Siri, tell Google, tell whomever is your little personal assistant that lives on your smartphone. If you have an Alexa or a Google Home or whatever, tell them, all right? Tell them 35 minutes. Do If you do not set a timer, you're gonna burn it and you're gonna be sad, all right? Be back with you when this, when this sucker is done and beautiful. All right, see you then. All right. So our bread is done and it is out and we have dark goldenness all over here. We have a couple spots that got a little dark, but it's fine. It's not burned. Um, we did have a little bit of a deal with, I think I had a seam that I hadn't tucked all the way under and our seam blew out just a little bit. Um, this is not going to hurt the flavor one bit. Um, you'll still even be able to make sandwiches out of the slices from there. Um, it's just not as Pinterest perfect as some of the loaves I've done, but it is really nice. You can see those slashes opened up. It just needed a little bit more. Um, so maybe I could have done one more and given it just a little bit more room to rise or slashed a little deeper. What happened is it, it rose up and hit kind of the end and it needed to expand more. Um, so those folds really help it really, really rise. So you got to give it some room. Um, and these slashes just give it a little bit extra room to expand. Um, because what will happen is the regular skin of the loaf will harden up, but these, these, uh, these score lines allow it to keep expanding. You can see this one hit the end and even ripped open a little bit more because it had a little bit of tension in there. Now, how do you tell that it's done other than by color? This nice golden color, this right here, up here, this dark brown um, that's almost getting to black, that's a little darker um, than perfect, but see this kind of reddish brown right here? This is about perfect. But even with this, this is still, this is not a ruined loaf. This is a perfect loaf. So it is not as sensitive. Now see the bottom of this? Oh, look at it. Can you hear it? Now, this is what you need to hear from a sourdough loaf to know that the middle is not doughy. You need to flip it over and thunk the bottom, okay? 
So let's thunk the bottom and you want it to sound almost like a basketball. It's like a pumped up basketball that's like hollow in the middle, okay? Let's listen. Okay, let me hold it up for you. Oh damn, it's hot. Let me grab a, here we go. See, that, that thump thump, that is perfect. Make sure that you cool it on a wire rack or, um, I mean, you can, you can figure out some way to prop up the loaf. Don't leave it on the pan or else you'll get a soggy bottom. We don't want a soggy bottom. All right, so that is one way to do it. I had a loaf that I made this same way, but instead of making one oblong loaf like that, the oblong loaves are a little harder to pull off. I made, um, about a day ago, I made this round loaf and I did the crisscross slash on it, and it turned out really great. So let me go ahead. I have a cutting board here. And I've been, I've been just making bread to beat the band. Here's a little um, heel of a piece of bread that I made a loaf um, a couple days ago. Just go ahead. I'm going to cut this one open just so we can see what the inside of it looks like. Okay, got my serrated bread knife. And the crust on these is a pretty robust crust, so you're gonna you're gonna need a some type of a knife with some good teeth to it. Okay, there we go. All right, so the inside of here, you can see we've got some good holes, but you also have enough actual bread to it that it's not gonna like let you get jelly or mayo on your hands when you cut a slice of it. So all you have to do if you wanna make a nice sandwich, just kinda line yourself up. And yes, it's gonna have some crumbles to it. That's, that's how you know the crust is good. Cut yourself a slice like that. Cut yourself a couple slices, throw some lunch meat or something on there, have yourself a nice long sandwich, and even cut it at an angle. Really schnazzy looking. So, this sourdough bread recipe, I'm telling you, even though our loaf, <laughs> even though our loaf is not perfect, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of sad it didn't behave better for us. Um, but you can just hear this. This is going to have such a great crust. Just listen to this knife go over it. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, and then the best way to keep this sourdough bread um, with a nice crust is actually what I do with this little piece that I've had is I'll just cut the end off of it. Um, on a on a cutting board and then when I'm done with it I just keep it face down on the cutting board if you put it in a bag condensation in the bag is going to make your crust get soggy and nobody wants a soggy crust after you worked this hard to make good sourdough bread and this literally I've been working on this loaf of bread <sighs> maybe three or four days. It's not moldy, it's not stale. Um, this crust is very resistant to going stale because it's such a nice crust. Um, so this bread actually lasts a pretty, pretty long time compared to most other homemade breads. And since the bottom that would normally lose moisture is face down, um, this, this is not even stale. It's, it's nice and soft still. So there you go. Um, here is our bread recipe. Kind of bummed that it was wanting to blow out the edge there, but you know what? That's probably more reminiscent of what is going to happen to you at home. The more you do it, the better you get. The better you get, the more beautiful you, you do it. But these are a living thing. We are cooking a living thing. Every living thing is different, and so every loaf you bake will be just a little bit different. Some of them are going to be like Pinterest perfect. Some of them are gonna be like this and they are going to be delicious, but not, not necessarily Pinterest perfect. And that's okay. That is okay. So um, 
Also, if you end up with something like this heel and this heel starts to go stale on you, don't dare throw out good sourdough bread. What you do is if, you, if you're feeling a little bit of um, some, maybe some French toast, you cut this into some slices and you can take and make some beautiful French toast out of it. Or you can take and cut it up into some small cubes, toss it in uh, a, a Ziploc bag with a little bit of olive oil and some seasonings, throw it on a cookie sheet and bake it in the oven and just kind of toast them up. Make yourself some salad croutons. You can always figure out a way to finish up a loaf of sourdough bread if you don't get it eaten in time, but I'm telling you, unless you live all by yourself and you're trying on purpose not to eat it, um, you'll usually get through your loaf before you're in danger of it going stale. But I would suggest the, the oblong loaf is a little bit harder to pull off. Um, the, the little round loaves, you can get two round loaves out of this amount of dough. The two round loaves are a little bit easier um, to pull off. So... Um, you could either put them both kind of on the same baking sheet, or you could maybe just d work with one half of the dough and bake it and then get the second half of the dough ready and then bake it right after. Um, you, can, you can kind of figure out what works for you in your kitchen, in your situation. Alrighty, so that is the sourdough bread recipe. It is beautiful. It tastes amazing. It's so good, you don't even need to eat it with butter, I swear. Um, but it, it, is, it makes amazing sandwich bread. It makes amazing French toast. Um, it, it makes an, a really awesome patty melt. Even if you're just going to have it with some peanut butter and jelly, it's good. And even just a, a little bit of just throw it in the toaster oven or the toaster if it'll fit. It makes awesome toast. So there you go.